Hey everybody, it is Sunday afternoon and I'm on my way home from spraying some of my customers. This time of year I gotta spray whenever I get the opportunity and today is actually a pretty nice day. So I'm now on my way over to PetSmart just to see if they got any interesting fish in this week. I'm still looking for some of those thick-lipped gouramis, but that's beside the point. Uh, going over to the fish store that just got me thinking about a uh, topic I've been talking about recently and that is the Sun Sun filters and when I first got into the hobby I heard them referred to most often as the eBay filters and I never really understood that I assumed they were sold on eBay but I always saw them on Amazon and on Amazon they're sold as Sun Sun although if you look around you will occasionally find another brand that looks identical uh, in fact there's one called the Polar Aurora and it looks identical to the Sun Sun. And that's because it is identical to the Sun Sun. And I'm gonna explain why all that is and how all that works. And I'm sure this is not gonna be any new information for a lot of you, but it might be to some, so it's worth talking about. It'll give you a better uh, information when you go into shopping for aquarium equipment, because this applies across the board. This isn't just with Sun Sun. Uh, a lot of you out there will use uh, Aquatop products. And Aquatop products are just the store branded uh, version from Petco, I'm sorry, Pet Smart has the, um, no, I'm sorry, Top Fin, I'm getting myself confused here. Top Fin is the store brand for Pet Smart, and Top Fin is Tetra, and Tetra and Marineland are the same company, and those are all owned by the Spectra Group, and the Spectra Group sells everything from hardware to home appliances to, uh, bug spray and pesticides, all the Spectra products, Spectracide and all that kind of stuff that's all made by Tetra effectively. And so it's all that same big parent company that owns all of them. So when you buy your store branded Top Fin product, you're basically buying a Whisper, Tetra Whisper filter. Uh, it's the same thing as the Top Fin 40 is a Whisper 40 from Tetra. It's the same filter, it comes off the same assembly line and everything. So with Sun Sun, as far as I know, the parent company is the Sensen Manufacturing Group Limited or something like that. But they, like the PetSmart group or like the group for um, Tetra rather, uh, they sell all kinds of stuff and they manufacture all kinds of stuff. And then they sell that to whoever wants to brand and sell their product. Uh, for example, I just bought a freezer the other day from Magic Chef. And if you're familiar with Magic Chef, they're sort of a, they're an in-between kind of company. You know, you buy a GE freezer, you know GE made that freezer. You buy one from Magic Chef, Magic Chef doesn't make their freezers. They simply buy them from somewhere and they slap their Magic Chef logo on it. And that's it. And I had actually been looking around for a chest freezer for a long time. And on Amazon, there's this one particular freezer. It's a low budget freezer. I've seen it by 50 different uh, names out there. Arctic King, Polar King, you know, there's all these different names on it. Of course, there's a million uh, just weird off-brand Chinese names. It's the same freezer, you know? And the other day I was at the Home Depot at the um, Black Friday and I look over and there's that freezer it's the same identical freezer and this one just had a magic chef sticker on it and it was really cheap so i actually got it from home depot cheaper than i would have got it from one of these off-branded no-name chinese distributors but it's the same freezer it comes off the same assembly line because people like magic chef don't make their own freezers they buy them from somebody and everybody has to buy their stuff from somebody so all of these filters out there that you see that look just like that Sun Sun filter, they are that Sun Sun filter. It's just people buying a bulk purchase of them, slapping their sticker on it, and selling it as Bob's Aquarium filter or whatever. Um, I found out recently the reason it was so commonly called the eBay filter is I checked on eBay and you will see it either listed as the Sun Sun you may occasionally see a few other brand names that are just slapped on there, like the Polar Aurora. Uh, but most of them are just not even branded. They're just some seller somewhere that is 
buying these filters and selling them. In fact, they're probably not even buying them and selling them. They're probably taking your order, sending your order to Sensen Group, and then Sensen Group ships you your filter. And they probably, whoever you're buying it from on eBay, probably never comes in contact with that filter. So that's where you get into your buying choices. It's all the same filter. And it's a decent filter. It is a budget filter. So remember, uh, when you're looking, again, we're talking about the Sunsun 304B here, that eBay filter. Um, it is a budget filter. So their quality control is probably not the same as, um, you know, a higher quality brand or whatever. But when you see these, you know, no name, fly by night, Chinese sticker on it or something that's got nothing to do with the quality of the product that's the same filter that the Sun Sun sticker is on comes off the same line all of that when you're in that situation what you have to consider is the seller you know I can go on eBay and I can buy one of those filters for $72 but it's from who knows who coming from who knows where how long will it take to get here what happens if it shows up broken you know what kind of customer support am i going to get you know so i can go that route for 72 dollars or i can get a sun sun filter from amazon prime have it delivered in two days and then if it shows up broken or it's defective for some reason i've got all the customer support and guarantees of amazon so the extra 15 dollars is worth it for me to get it from amazon but it's the same filter it's just the seller is who you really need to take into consideration when you're buying stuff like that so if you're shopping around on Amazon and you're looking for any kind of little digital electronics, you're looking for a pH meter, or a TDS meter for your aquarium or something like that, and you'll see what appears to be the same meter over and over and over again, but it always has these different brands, it's the same meter. You really are seeing the same one over and over and over again. It's just people buy them, they slap their sticker on it, and they sell it to you for whatever they think they can get for it. So. When you're in that situation, find one that's a price that you like, that's a color you like. Maybe go with the Amazon Prime rather than the no-name brand seller or whatever. But as far as the product itself, as you know, if you're if you're weighing your options between this one and that one, and is there really any difference in quality? Oh wow, whoa! Whew. A couple of deer almost, almost just bit it right there. That car in front of me really did a good job of slamming their brakes on to not hit those two deer that ran across. Wow, that was a close one. Um, so yeah, when you're, when you're doing that, when you're shopping around for stuff like that, you, you don't have to worry so much about, you know, is the purple one for $12 going to be better than the blue one for $14? It's the same thing. It's just a matter of who's selling it, where, you know, what price they're slapping on it, what sticker they put on it. Uh, occasionally, they'll throw in a little extra mumbo jumbo. You've got a free carrying case with it. Uh, and, you know, little perks and stuff like that. And and so those are the kind of things you have to look at. Well, this one gives me a free carrying case and a charger. Yeah, is that the one you want? you get the charger with it then go ahead and buy it but if you're worried about the quality is this a better TDS meter than this TDS meter it's the same TDS meter uh, you, you can even read the instructions and you know the little uh, manual and stuff that you can see there advertised on on the Amazon page that gives you an idea of what product you're buying or whatever it, it's word for word it's verbatim it's the same pamphlet that comes with it because whoever's buying it buys it from the same distributor so that's how the Sun Sun filter is simply uh, the Sun Sun filter. And on that note, I will tell one final story. You can stop watching now if you're done with the uh, you know fish filter stuff because this is going to be a story about when I was a milkman living in Florida, and I worked for Skinner's Dairy. It was a local dairy, and our main competition was another local dairy named Gustafsson's Dairy. And as you can imagine, there were people who swore by their Skinner's Dairy, and then there were other people who absolutely swore by their Gustafsons, because, you know, this one's got the better milk, and that one's got the better milk. And as a Skinner's, you know, dairyman, I wore the uniform and everything, and when I was making my deliveries, I often heard both of those arguments. I had people tell me how great our stuff was, and then, of course, I'd always have people tell me how I was working for the wrong company, I should go over to Gustafsons, et cetera, et cetera. But the one that really struck me 
was not about our dairy products and our milk and where our cows grazed and whether they ate onion grass and all the kind of stuff you normally hear about uh, dairy products. What struck me was a woman just like laid into me one day about our orange juice and they insisted that Gustafsson's orange juice was just delicious and fresh and it was the best orange juice there was and Skinner's orange juice was just terrible and they didn't know what they made it with but it was just awful and etc etc and I assured her that our orange juice was every bit as fresh as Gustafsson's orange juice and I just left it at that. What I didn't tell her was Gustafsson's did not have any kind of processing facility for anything other than their milk and their dairy products. So all their fruit punches, um, orange juice, anything like that that they had processed. What they did was they sent us a trailer full of their cartons and once a week we'd shut the line down we'd take you know when we ran out of our skinner's orange juice cartons we'd load in a skid of the gustafson's orange juice cartons you know whatever they ordered that week they needed you know a thousand cartons of orange juice we'd run off a thousand cartons of orange juice in gustafson's boxes we'd put our skinner's boxes back in start the line back up and keep running the orange juice and then once a week, uh, Gustafsson's truck would show up and they'd pick up their trailer full of orange juice and fruit punch and all that stuff and they'd take it back and, you know, they'd go ahead and they'd deliver their Gustafsson's orange juice. And, <laughs> you know, that was my first lesson. I was 21 years old at the time and that was my first lesson and things are generally not what you think they are when you see them uh, in the retail world of like where things come from and who makes them fresh orange juice, how fresh fresh orange juice is and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, generally by the time you're getting orange juice, it's, it was on a tree a long time ago by the time you're drinking it. So anyway, uh, that's the long and short of it. My orange juice story there was sort of the icing on the cake. And again, if you were interested in the fish stuff, I didn't, I finished with that long ago. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed all that rambling chat about how behind the scenes stuff works in the retail distribution market and a little bit of a glimpse into the dairy industry from way back in the day. So thanks again for watching. Make sure you're subscribed. You never know what you're going to get with me. And I will see you real soon on the next one.